Hello advanced fiddlers! So today we're going to go back to catharsis and we're focusing entirely on applying our scale. So a couple days ago you were focused on the B flat major scale, your finger position with that scale, and also G minor. What I want to do today is emphasize the importance of spot practicing. So spot practicing is my magic wand for focusing on any treble spots in the tune. And there's a natural treble spot in catharsis, which is the B section. Um, that A section, as long as you follow the bowing, should, should flow smoothly. The B section we tend to trip up on because it takes a lot of right and left hand coordination. And then on top of that, there's a lot of spacing issues with the fingers and blocking. So blocking is when one finger will sit over two strings. So that happens quite a bit in this tune where we have three sitting over A and D, and you're going to have second finger sitting over A and D, and then first. So what we're going to start with first is third finger. Walking right into the second section, I want you to block third finger over both of those strings. So we've got... So you'll notice I'm not hopping. So three, three, three. So the way I want you to approach your practice in this section is just like this. So a time saver for me is to depress third finger and then to leave it. So you'll notice as I'm going down that scale, three, 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 two, three, one, three, A, I'm not moving third finger. And then I'll do the same thing with three, two, 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 one, two, A, two. Save time, don't move that second finger. And then same thing with the E flat, don't move first finger. So it will look like this. So I'm perfectly, perfectly in tune, having blocked the third finger. And here we go. Now I'm going to lock second finger in place. I'm blocking it, and I'm not going to lift two. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my E flat. E flat. And for Heather, Heather requested the breakdown of my decoration here. I'm playing D, C, and then a cut. B, B flat, C, B flat. Okay, now the last thing I want you to focus on as we're going through the B section, only the, the left hand is only half the work. So in order to bring those two together now, we've talked a little bit about the egg beater wrist, staying nice and comfortable and flexible in the right hand, bending that thumb to keep the hollow of the bow nice and open. But I'm going to have you lower that arm a little bit so that you're not playing at the middle bow and you're not playing at the frog. You're playing at the upper middle towards the tip. So that's right here. So if this is my bow, 
This is my middle. I'm get, drawing you up just a little bit towards the tip. Not to the extreme because you'll lock your elbow again, but just high enough that instead of using so much forearm motion, you're encouraging finger movement, wrist movement, and forearm mo movement. So what that will look like, again, block the threes. I don't want you to raise your violin when you practice, but I'm doing that right now just to get the angle for you. Maybe we can do it this way. Okay. items to keep in mind here. One is that your hand will always move. Sorry, I'll, I'm going to go back a step. When we first learned our bow hold, we were taught where to place our fingers and it tends to make us rigid when we first play. Um, what I want you to think of is your hand as a living, breathing tool that adds on, think of the bow as a tool, or think of the bow as an extra part of our limb. So this is our sixth finger. Um, that way when you're working with it, you're not thinking of a tight bow hold, you're thinking of moving another digit. So you're working with the bow to move instead of holding the bow so you don't drop it. Right, that's our initial fear in the beginning. You're not going to drop the bow. And say you do, practice on carpet and it doesn't matter. But try and stay really flexible in that hand so that as you speed up, your fingers, your forearm, and your wrist all work together as one. All right, the last thing I wanted to point out is as we were talking about blocking our threes, blocking our twos, you'll notice that my fingers stayed quite close to the strings. And what I want you to get from that is economy of motion and speed. So if I go three, da 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 and I'm pulling back, when I go to work up to speed, I'm slowing myself down because I'm moving so far from my fingerboard. So try and keep everything relaxed. Nice, and think of yesterday's exercise where we were shifting and keeping this hand relaxed for Highland Lullaby. Keep everything close and loose so that when you switch between um, fingers, your, your movement is fast but relaxed. All right, that's everything for today. So we'll see you tomorrow.